If you were a child of the 90s, like I was, if you like submarines, or if you just like the color blue, you may be familiar with the TV series Sequest DSV. This took place in a fictional future where the World Oceanographic Institute sends forth a research submarine that is about 800 miles long to ply the depths and keep the peace in the world's oceans. A few years ago, I worked uh, in conjunction with a gentleman by the name of Will Babington to produce the most accurate 1 300th scale resin kit of this iconic submarine. What you're looking at here is the result of those efforts. Now, we stopped production of these a few years ago, but uh, there are a few people that managed to hang on with these. Most, if not all, were put together as display models. Uh, this one is fully functional. So this kit is about 43 inches in overall length. Uh, Rotocast resin. You can see the gorgeous detail on there. This is all three-dimensional, by the way. This is not a paint effect. The bio skin from the show. You got all the windows in there, the central sphere for all of the uh, like EVA vehicles. The rear football engines and these iconic fins in the back. So making this into a functional boat was not the easiest thing out there. Obviously this is a fictional boat never designed to actually function in a water environment. Taking a look at the design you can see it's uh, reminiscent of a cuttlefish. You've got like the mantle on the front and the tentacles on the back. Very organic shape. Um, you would think fairly hydrodynamic, but of course there's a lot of insets and cutouts and cool things that add a lot of drag to it. Nonetheless, we managed to get it going and get it going fairly well. Now when I was generating in my brain the idea of putting all the internal guts into this boat, there's a few considerations that we needed to take. We need a place to put the battery, and I elected to use this forward football area that we call it. The central area is actually uh, simply, simply free flooding. Now, if I were to do this as a static diving submarine uh, with a ballast system, that would be the absolute ideal place to put that in. The rear section houses the main propulsion motor, the uh, servos, and the watertight box for the receiver. And then in the back, we've got the rear engine that was modified for dive planes and rudders. The motor is inside this rear compartment, and as such, it's pulling water from outside the boat. In order to make that happen, we needed to make a passage, and uh, to that effect, we made two large intakes on either side of the boat. It provides a, a large ingress for the water to get pushed through a rear bulkhead by a four-bladed brass pop prop and then it washes over the control surfaces which gives instantaneous reaction to pitch and yaw inputs. Flipping the boat upside down, so this is the bottom, this is not the top, um, we need to get access to the boat and to that effect we made two hatches and these are magnetic. This is the uh, forward battery compartment here. And the main power plant is a uh, fully sealed um, lithium polymer battery pack. And uh, this goes into this mounting bracket in the front. It's held down with some Velcro here. And uh, once you attach the power to the battery, um, you'll see the LED lights are gonna light up, which I'm gonna show you here momentarily. Going in the back, you can see the free flood hole and a bunch of foam that we have inside for flotation. The rear section is uh, exactly like the front, magnetically held down. And this is the uh, rear compartment. We've got our main drive motor, waterproof servos, and the waterproof box 
for the receiver. So water gets pulled in through this intake into the main area and then is blown through that rear prop bulkhead over the control surfaces. So some of you may be asking, well, well the motor is in the water. Like, isn't that going to like rust up and, uh, and fall apart? Um, the answer is no. This is a brushless motor. So uh, this is well suited to operations in the wet. The only thing that you need to do uh, is use a little like WD-40 and just, just give it a little dab in there after every run that displaces uh, any water that would be in there and stops any corrosion from forming on the internal components. All right, I want to talk about the stern of the boat here. Now I'm going to push these fins out. They are on a hinge so that they can be adjusted. So now you can see the uh, rudder there and the main dive plane. And then we've got these magnetic struts. So there's magnets embedded in the main bulkhead here and also in the fins. The reason that we did that was to offset a rather unfortunate tendency of the boat to uh, want to turn to the left and to want to dive just due to the hydrodynamic shape of the hull. With these adjustable fins, we can use them to offset those tendencies. So that left turning tendency is offset by a little bit more angle on this right fin. And the tendency to dive is a little bit more angle on the top fin. And this can all be adjusted easily by simply adjusting the number of disc magnets that are stacked in place there. So the owner actually has extra magnets that he can use to adjust the angle if he decides that he wants to modify the performance characteristics of the boat when he's out at the pond. So one of the neatest things about this are the LED lights that are installed. It really turns this into a very dynamic looking boat. There's a lot of lights in here. Let's take a look at what it looks like if we turn the lights down a bit. So here you go in a little bit more of a dim situation. Those lights really set the boat off. This would look gorgeous operating in a dark swimming pool or at a night run at your local RC submarine event. So at the beginning of this video, you saw this craft in operation in my swimming pool undergoing her maiden testing. Let's talk about how it actually performs as a functional boat. So the steering response is actually not too bad at all. Uh, because these rudders and dive planes are mounted directly behind the propeller, you've actually got really good response to pitch and yaw inputs from your transmitter. With the trim uh, adjusted properly and the fins in the correct spot, it will actually run straight and true without the need for an automatic pitch controller in the slightest. Uh, it does not turn exceptionally quickly. It's very, very long. And uh, with the size of the control surfaces in the back, uh, you're just not going to get a massive amount of force applied to move it about its central axis. That said, it's still a very reasonable uh, rate of turn and it would be perfect for a small pond situation. Perhaps this boat is a little bit too big for a swimming pool, but uh, you know, a large enough one, yeah, you could run this uh, in a large public swimming pool without any issues. Well, there you go, guys. This was an overview of this 1 300th scale Sequest DSV RC submarine build by myself, Bob Martin, the RC sub guy. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider liking and subscribing to my channel. It helps us out here a lot. If you have any comments, drop them below, or you can email me directly, bob at nautilusdrydocks.com. With that, we're going to let you go. Have a great day, and we'll catch you next time.